Hey, good morning, um, Children's Ministry World friends. We are so grateful that you have chosen to join us this morning here on The Hive as we explore all things St. Patrick's Day. Hey, I'm Kim, and I get to serve as the Kids and Youth Ministry Manager here for CTA, which just means I get to spend a lot of time dreaming and imagining and wondering what it would be like to support you um, as you lead kids and their families and other leaders to find and follow Jesus. So, hey. It's really good to meet you. If you would just share in the chat where you're joining us from, we love to know where our friends are, even if you're all over the world. And if you have a prayer request, we always love to know those too. So would you um, be willing to share those with us? If it's private, you could just say this is a private nature and we will know to keep um, you in our prayers. So thank you again for joining us on this Wednesday morning. So um, now that we've all introduced ourselves, we're going to talk about all things St. Patrick's Day. What a fun time um, to just get to talk about the truth behind our friend St. Patrick and what changed his heart to find and follow Jesus. Well, it's a super fun day um, to talk about green things. We also want to be able to impress upon the kids in our ministry how Jesus radically changed St. Patrick's life and caused him to tell others about Jesus. So we are going to give you a printout. And if it's not able to be dropped in the chat, we have amazing tech people working behind the scenes trying to get that for us. But if they are, if you're not able to grab that from the chat, I would love for you to email me. You can find me at khudson, H-U-D-S-O-N, at ctainc.com. And I promise if you send me an email letting me know that you would like that link to the resource, I will be happy to send that to you. Not only will I send you the resource about St. Patrick and his truth and a short lesson that you can go over with the kids in your ministry, but I will also send you a link to a clover and you'll understand that in a few minutes why you'll need that so that you can print those out and have those ready for Sunday morning. So um, St. Patrick. Wow. I learned a lot in doing some research for today's webinar. Did you know that his name originally wasn't St. Patrick? And when I did the research on how to pronounce it, I came across a couple of different ways to pronounce it. So one of them was Sukkot and another one was Sukkot. So I think it just depends on maybe where you are from and how you would pronounce that. So originally his name was not St. Patrick and he lived a wild life as a teenager, he rebelled against his family and much like the lost son. And I just want to pause here for a moment and talk a little bit about the lost son. Most of us grew up hearing that he was called the prodigal son, or sometimes you might hear about prodigal children. And in doing some research um, and just talking to other friends in the kids ministry world, what has been brought to my attention recently is when you actually read in the Bible and it gives us like the little um, titles before the different parables, it talks about the lost coin, the lost sheep, and it actually says lost son. Isn't that amazing that we've all heard all of our lives, the prodigal son. And I think there's something big and different in being lost and being a prodigal. So that's just for you as ministry leaders to uh, maybe just, what do you want to call it? Just sit with, um, to meditate on, to pray about, and to see ask God to show you what that really means to be a lost son versus a prodigal son. So let's go back to St. Patrick. He was a lost son. He was not following um, Jesus. He was not following God as his parents and his family had done so. And he was rebelling and he was out living a wild life, doing wild, crazy things, which we would call sin and running his heart away from Jesus as he possibly could. When he was kidnapped um, and brought into slavery, be really careful how we talk about that with kids. Kids really don't understand slavery. And um, yeah, he was just forced to do a lot of really gross work and ended up in the place with the muddy pigs. And I'd like to talk to kids about being a muddy pig all the time that, yeah, we're all a bunch of muddy pigs without Jesus. Just like that lost son was living in this pig pit. We also do that until we find and follow Jesus and start living for him. So back to St. Patrick, who at that time was still called Sukkot. He started praying and Jesus delivered him. He found a sea captain who was willing to take him upon his vessel and get him back to where he needed to be with his family. He fell in love with Jesus. 
um, he started running hard after Jesus. And would you think that he would have been bitter and angry against the people who had taken him captive and forced him to work? Well, that's probably what most of us would be. But because he was so in love with Jesus and because he followed him, he actually wanted to go back, back to the same place where he was taken captive, where he was forced to work against his will in horrible conditions and start spreading the word about Jesus. Isn't that amazing? I love that St. Patrick was actually a missionary. <laughs> so as he was telling people about, about Jesus, he also noticed that there was shamrocks or what we would call clovers in great abundance all throughout Ireland. And because he wanted people to understand about the triune God, God, the father, God, the son, Jesus, and God, the Holy Spirit, our helper, he used that clover as an example of how to show people that God is a triune God. And everywhere he went, he was just known for a clover or a shamrock, which is green. So I guess that's why so many of our times around St. Patrick's Day are filled with green things. So as we talk about how we can talk with kids about St. Patrick and tell the true story, uh, we, like I said, we have created a resource for you. You can read it word for word. You can go over it and summarize it much like I have. You can change it to fit your kids' culture and their understanding based on their age and their understanding of who Jesus is and what sin is. And most of all, how to find and follow Jesus and follow and love with him. Younger children have a difficult time understanding the Holy Spirit. So you'll want to do some time praying and asking Jesus how to explain the Holy Spirit to those younger children. But I think it's a great time to just talk about how we have a triune God and we get to serve him. So what we would love to do is encourage you to really bring St. Patrick into your kids ministry this coming Sunday. With it following on a Sunday, it's a great opportunity to talk about him, understand, help kids understand why they see all things green, why they're encouraged to wear green, why they see the rainbow, which is always a promise of Jesus, um, that, or of God, that he will never flood the whole earth again, um, why they might see clovers everywhere and make it a time where when they see a clover, hopefully what they will remember after they have left your class on that Sunday morning is that God is the triune God. He is three in one. He is God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit. A few ideas of how to include your kids and get them excited for this Sunday is what would it be like to send out a message to them, to their families, using your social media, your email, encouraging everywhere, everybody to wear green. It just gets everybody in a fun mood. And most people have green. So it could be a ball cap, it could be a pair of socks, it could be a dress, it could be a shirt, it could be jeans, um, tennis shoes, shoelaces, earrings, a headband. The possibilities are endless. We would always want to be careful that families didn't think they had to go purchase something just to participate. So even maybe encourage them to just use a green sticker if they don't have something green in their closet for their kids. And as CMLs, we wanna make sure that all kids feel seen and included. And what would it be like if you had a visitor to show up on St. Patrick's Day and they didn't know we were all wearing green? So this is a good time for you as a CML just to have some green stickers, um, something inexpensive like a headband, a barrette, maybe even um, a pair of shoelaces that you could gift to a first time guest this Sunday that was green. So they too will feel included. Um, I'm just gonna give a personal story. We had pajama day very often when I would serve as a CML. And one Sunday we had a sweet little girl show up and it was her first time and she was dressed in her Sunday best and she felt so left out. And that made me realize how important it is that we always include all kids all the time as much as we possibly can. Okay, so back to St. Patrick's Day at your church. If your church culture still serves snacks, what would it be like to create a green snack day? That might be green jello that's prepackaged if your um, rules are that everything has to be prepackaged. And but you could also include some cool whip or some spray whip topping for kids to participate to put on top of their green jello that's already pre-made. Or what would it be like to take um, a taste test to have things that kids might not taste otherwise? What I found when I was a kid's pastor is a lot of kids would try foods in class that they would never try at home. And parents were always amazed at what kids would actually try and discover that they liked, that they had actually tried to do at home and kids didn't like. So what would it be like to have some green olives 
Um, now be sure to slice those so that they don't create a choking hazard. Um, green grapes. How about kiwi fruit, cucumbers, celery? Um, if you want to make it fun, add some sweet sour candies that are green. Um, the possibilities are endless. Limes, some things that you could get kids to taste. Um, not only are they tasting something, but what would it be like for let them to let them touch it to see what the textures are? We know when we engage all five senses in learning, kids really do remember things much better. Okay, so now we've set the stage. We've all worn our green or we've provided something green for the kids. Maybe we've had our snack. We've definitely had our lesson time. Now we wanna know what are we gonna do for a craft? And this is where it gets really fun. These ideas that we have come up for with you um, do include the cute little clover that we are providing for you. You could print that on cardstock if you have that ability. If not, you could also print it on just plain paper so that kids can create this craft. So the few items that you're going to need to have on hand are easily accessible at your local craft stores, your local discount stores, or even for purchase from Amazon. These are not products that we would carry here at CTA, but we know that you would be able to find them easily. So I just want to kind of show you some things that you might already have on hand in your storage rooms. A simple clothespin, a package of pom-poms, Lego of all sizes. So you're going to need different sizes of Lego. Um, including like the smaller ones and then the little teeny tiny ones. Now be sure to base the size of Lego depending on what age of children you are serving. Obviously toddlers would not want to have these little tiny blocks. They would need the bigger ones. We don't want to create a choking hazard. You're also going to need a paper plate. Um, I just had a small one on hand. So when you provide the paint for the kids that they're going to use to paint with, I would suggest having one paper plate for every two kids. It helps them to learn how to share. If you're going to use a small plate, you could also just put multiple plates down the middle of a table. Or if you want to get really ambitious, just put parchment paper down the middle of the table and squirt paint where kids can share. Um, I wouldn't give each kid their own. I think this is a good opportunity to talk about how we can share. Um, not only how we can share our paint, but we can share the love of Jesus with other people. And then I used for home, I used apple barrel paints. Now I have used these in class, but be careful if you use these in class, kids, you don't want to ruin kids clothes. Um, have smocks or aprons handy. Be sure to roll up sleeves. Talk to kids about how mom and dad might be really upset with you as their CML if they come home with paint on their clothes. Um, and now what I like to put um, paint onto paper plates or however you're going to give it to kids, we like to use this little rhyme that helps kids remember they don't need to use a lot of paint. So we would say a dot, a dot, and not a lot. And I would have kids say that with me, a dot, a dot, and not a lot. And it really does help them to remember that when they're doing their craft or they're doing their activity, um, you can use this with glue too, that a little bit goes a long way. Now, if you don't wanna use permanent paint, you can definitely use like a tempera paint. You're also gonna need some stickers if you wanna do the sticker craft. Now, I did purchase these because I don't have stickers laying around my house. However, if you have these in your um, your supply room, it could be any kind of a green sticker. And honestly, it could be any kind of sticker. It wouldn't have to be green, but if you want to stick with the green theme, I would recommend any type of green sticker. So the first one we're going to talk about um, is actually going to use a dot paint. And most of us have these in our curriculum rooms. And again, I'm using green today just to reinforce the green. Um, of clover tends to look green, but you could definitely use any colors that you have. So the first one that I did, and I probably did a whole lot more dots than most kids are going to put on their page, but you can kind of see the dot. Isn't that fun? And as they're dotting, again, a dot, a dot, and not a lot, because these are the kind of paints that we want to dot with. We don't want to drag. And kids could take this home. You could actually write Jesus, God, and Holy Spirit, if you wanted to on these, um, be sure to put your kid's name. And here's a tip. Kids love to write their own names. Even if they don't write it perfectly, it's good practice for those little ones. If you need to write it on the back, that's okay too. We didn't provide a name like line because we want you to be able to put the kids' names where you think they will be best. So the next one that I created was with pom-poms. Like, isn't it fun to say pom-poms? Like what a fun thing to say. <laughs> so I think kids love pom-poms too. And I found different textures. So if you can kind of see this one's got like little fingers all over it, I guess is what you would call it. And then we use different sizes. So letting kids kind of pick those 
but you're thinking, I don't want a kid to paint with pom-com. It's going to get all over their fingers. That's where these clothespins come in handy. And you could have these already ready for them when they walk in the classroom, if you decide that this is the craft that you want them to create. So the great thing about pom-poms and clothespins is they stick together super well. This is not going to fall off. Um, and little hands may need help. But if you teach an age group where you have older kids and younger kids all in the same class, I would highly encourage you to ask those older kids to help the younger kids, maybe even have them seated in such a way that the older kids can help the younger kids. It gives you extra hands, especially if you're short on volunteers, but it also encourages those olders to teach the youngers. And you know how little kids just love to look up to older kids. So it's super simple. I'm not going to squirt out paint. You don't need to need to show you how, but you'll put the paint on the paper plate and then dot it in and then just let the kids dot it all over. Now you can see I use different shades of green. I think it's a great time to talk about how diversity um, exists in our world, how we all may look different. Um, some of us may be tall, some of us may be short, some of us may have long hair, some of us may have short hair. We have different color of eyes, different color of skin, but Jesus loves us all. He made us all individual and unique. And that's really important to remember as they're making their craft, to encourage them to make their own craft, to try to keep hands off and not say it has to look just like the one I created, but to let them use their creativity and their individuality to create the shamrock or the clover that they wanted to create. And then the next one that we really enjoy playing with is Lego. And have you ever painted with Lego? If you haven't, you're going to love this idea. Again, paint on your plate and then just dot your Lego in. Now these Lego tend to work the best. The little ones, as you can kind of tell, the paint gets in between the circles more than it does on the big one, but that's okay. That's how it works. So this one here, I created using the little Lego, as you can kind of see, that's about the same shape. And I used a rectangle and I used a square. Again, this is a great time to teach kids their shapes. Not all kids of this age, especially if you're working with toddlers, know their shapes yet. So you could say, let's pick up our square and hold the square up and they would pick up their square. Or you could say, hold up your rectangle and they would hold up their rectangle and then they would dot it inside of their clover. So the next one I created using more like the bigger. And I really love how this one turned out also, again, using multiple shades of green, using the square, using the rectangle, letting them dot all over their page. Now the Duplo, the bigger ones, these are perfect for those toddler hands. Those are perfect for those twos, threes, and even some four-year-old hands. Honestly, I think a one-year-old could do this with a lot of help, <laughs> but it doesn't look quite as defined, which is fine. You can kind of still see the dots all over it. However, what I did find out is the big rectangle, even though we want to talk about shapes, doesn't fit as you can kind of see. So we definitely would want to use the square or if you had even a single Duplo, that would work really well. Now you're thinking, I have too many kids to have paint. There's no way I'm going to be able to put paint onto paper plates. We're going to have paint everywhere. I don't have time. I would love to do this craft and this activity. Um, uh, let kids actually create this activity while I'm reading to them or telling them the true story of St. Patrick. I have plenty of volunteers to help, but there is no way we're doing paint. I get that. I've been in a church that's so large that you do not want kids to have paint because you just simply don't have time. What about stickers? It makes a super fun craft. And while I was really particular about getting mine just in the right places, let kids be creative. Let them put them where they want to. Um, what would it look like to encourage them to tear them even maybe to fill their stem of their clover? All the time talking about how Jesus loves them so much that he sticks to them everywhere they go. That when they find and follow Jesus and they fall in love with Jesus, he sticks to them like these stickers stick to the page. So use your creativity use your imagination and think about different ways that you can use the, the clover activity. One thing I thought of that I wanted to show you today, which wasn't possible because everything is still brown where I live, is what if you went out into nature and gathered up grass or leaves or flowers or even some clover and had those in the classroom for the kids? Um, not only would this be a great experience for them to touch something in nature, it would give you a chance to talk about how God created everything, referring them back to Genesis. But it also would be a fun thing to actually glue with glue stick to your clover to make it a, a very three-dimensional, very textured 
pipe clover. So the possibilities are endless. I'm sure you have even more ideas than I've shared today. And we would love to know those if you want to share those in the chat. Um, and yeah, when you're finished, we would love for you to post your pictures, not of kids, unless you're allowed to, but to post pictures maybe of your clover and tag CTA on your social media so we can see what you have created and share with others, even post it right here in the Hive community. So I hope that you have learned a little bit about St. Patrick's today, a little bit more than you knew before. And I would like to take a little bit of time now to just ask if you have any ideas that you wanna share. Since we are um, on a webinar, we would love for that to happen. And if not, if you would like to put it in the chat, if you don't wanna be on camera, that would be great too. We can share those toward the end. But hey, what's the next holiday after St. Patrick's Day in March? Right, it's Easter, it's so early this year. So we wanna make sure you are equipped and prepared and ready to welcome not only the kids that you get to see every Sunday, but those who might come a few times a year or even those who have never been to church and they decide to walk in your door on Easter Sunday. We have great news. We have all the resources that you need to create goodie bags, to create first time guest bags, to create worship bags, um, whatever kind of a gift that you would need for your kids. We also have incredible interactive crafts that don't require any glue. They don't require any glitter. They don't require scissors. It will make Easter Sunday prep super easy for you so that you can focus on the kids and the families that you get to serve. Those are still um, available for purchase with standard shipping as long as those are ordered by March 20th. So you still have a few days to get those in before March 20th so that they are shipped to you ready for you to use on Easter Sunday. And hey, if you have an idea of something that you would like us to create, would you send us an email? I'm always available. I love to hear your ideas. Give me your feedback, um, how these are being used in your ministry, what you could use in your ministry. And I'll send, I'll give you my email at the end of the video. So now we're past Easter. Whew, you made it. You've um, invited a bunch of families back and you would love to see them come to your vacation Bible school, to your summer camp to whatever your summer programming is that you are hosting at your church. Maybe you have been so concerned and so busy, frankly, getting ready for Easter that VBS or your summer programming has kind of sat on the back burner, but now you've had your break after Easter Sunday and you're like, now I need to focus on VBS. Well, again, we have great news for you. Our partners at Raise Up Faith have created an incredible vacation Bible school experience called Campfire. And Campfire wants you to light a fire for Jesus and watch that flame grow and spread. And we here at CTA have created some incredible products to go with the Vacation Bible School to ensure that you have all you need to have, help kids find and follow Jesus and spread that flame. RaiseUpFaith.com is where you would find um, the portal to join. They actually have a free account where you can sign up and explore. And then when you're ready to create your VBS, you would just simply do a subscription. Now, the great thing, if you joined us last month with our host, um, Natalie Frisk from Raise Up Faith, she's the curriculum director. What she reminded us is, is you can do a one month subscription to access the entire Vacation Bible School. And you guys, it is high quality, all the videos, all the leader notes, all the volunteer notes, everything you need to run Vacation Bible School. We know that you're going to love Campfire. Then once you have registered at Raise Up Faith and you've had an account and you've got your free Vacation Bible School because you're now a member of the Raise Up Faith community, you'll head over to CTA. We have the drawstring backpacks. We know all of our volunteers need those um, to carry everything around that kids want them to carry during Vacation Bible School. It's a great place to keep their rosters, to keep their first aid kits, um, to put their headphones that are silencing in case kids you know, need to get a little bit of silencing for like the live worship. It's a great place to put their fidgets and their spinners so that those kids that need a little bit of um, help with their fidget spinners, they can carry those around with them. We also have an incredible puppet. He is so cute. He is a s'more and talking about the s'more love of Jesus. We also have crafts. We have a flashlight. All you need to make sure campfire spreads like wildfire. So um, I think the next thing I just want to talk about is April. What we have coming up in April is all things May. Obviously, always thinking ahead, just like you. We are always thinking ahead, trying to think what you need, what you need to be equipped with so that you can run your ministries effectively. So in April, we're talking all things May, Mother's Day, 
graduations. Maybe you're promoting in May. Maybe you're actually having VBS in May. Um, maybe you're considering um, how you can best equip families as they welcome new little babies into their world. So all things May is what we'll be talking about in April. Be sure to register um, by RSVP for that webinar and invite your friends, invite your colleagues, invite people that you know would enjoy being in the Hive community. So as we wrap up this morning, what we would like to do is just take a few minutes um, to see if anybody has a prayer request and you could put those in the chat. And if not, then we're gonna say, we are so grateful that you joined us today on the Hive and we can't wait to see you next month. Okay, I don't see any prayer requests, so we're gonna go ahead and pray and dismiss, and we will be posting this video so that you can go back and rewatch it and get some other ideas. And we can't wait for you guys to be commenting in the Hive community, sharing with us your pictures, sharing with those on your social media, tagging us so that we can see those. And we are just gonna pray here in a few minutes that you guys have the best Sunday on St. Patrick's Day. So this is what I always say to kids, eyes open or eyes shut, Jesus hears our prayers no matter what because we want kids to know they can pray anywhere they go, everywhere they go. Um, if they're if their mom or dad's driving down the road or the grown up they're in the car with, we don't want them to shut their eyes while they're driving, but you can drive and pray. If they're on a playground and they don't feel comfortable, um, you know, being able to pray with their eyes shut or if they're at lunch in a school room or if they're dribbling a basketball down the basketball court or kicking a ball down the soccer field, we want them to know they can pray everywhere. And another reason I love to pray with my eyes open, especially when I'm praying over children, is it's a time I can ask the Holy Spirit to speak to me about specific kids and maybe the prayer needs they have, even though they're not willing to share those. So if you're comfortable praying with your eyes open, I invite you to do that with me now. But if you would prefer to close your eyes, I understand that too. So I'm going to pray for us. Hey, Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for the CMLs who spend hours and hours dedicating their time to not only serve you, but God, to seek you with their whole heart. So God, I ask that you would give them divine revelation on how to make St. Patrick's Day a super fun Sunday for the kids in their ministry. God, we thank you for your creativity that you're going to give them. And God, I thank you for technology that allows us to share a little bit of what you have shown to us here at CTA. God, as they head toward Easter, I ask you to refresh them, restore them, empower them, equip them. And God, most of all, that they would just have the eyes to see each child that walks into their ministry to see how they could best serve each child. But God, also, I ask that you would give them time to be with their own families, that they could um, enjoy this season and remembering the real reason that we celebrate. It's a, While bunnies are cute and jelly beans taste yummy, we are so grateful for your son, Jesus. We are so grateful that he's alive and that he rose from the dead. So God, I ask you to bless them. And I ask you to have the best, the best Sunday they could possibly have in Jesus' name. And we all said, amen. Now, I did promise you, again, I'm going to remind you of my email. If you have any questions, if you have any troubles downloading the PDFs that we're providing for you, and that is khudson at ctainc.com. Okay, I will see you in the hive, and I'll see you here next month in April for all things May. Thanks for joining us today.